welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we have another simple uh, and delicious dessert recipe for you. This time it is chocolate mousse. Uh, now it's a little different from the fruit mousse we did previously and chocolate mousse tends to have a lot more richness, uh, a lot more intensity of flavor and uh, we're gonna get going. We're gonna show you uh, what we're using for ingredients. So to start we have some chocolate, we're using dark chocolate here. Uh, this is 70 to 85% as if we can get it. Uh, once again we're using gelatin sheets. We're going to be using a little bit of vanilla, some sugar, and we're going to use it in two different ways, so we've got it separated, some egg yolks, some heavy creams, so this is 35% whipping cream, and we're just going to use a little bit of salt in this as well. So to start, we're going to get our uh, gelatin blooming, so uh, just like we did for the fruit mousse a couple weeks ago, uh, we're going to get some water and the gelatin sheets together. You just want to make sure that uh, they're all in good contact with the water and um, all of the amounts are going to be in the description below as usual. So next we're going to get our chocolate ready. Um, we're going to be melting this into uh, some of the cream so we do want to get it into small pieces so we're just going to chop it up into uh, little bits here. Once we've gone one direction we are going to turn it on an angle and go uh, across this way. Now you can break this up however you like. Uh, we find using a bread knife uh, with the serrated edge helps quite easily uh, when you're using uh, big bars of chocolate. Again, we're using a dark chocolate. Uh, we're using lint 70% um, and 85% uh, in a mixture here. But if you prefer milk chocolate, you can use milk chocolate for this as well. So we are going to get some cream over a double boiler here. We do want to get it nice and warm. So this is... Uh, just a portion of the heavy cream. You can see here we're over some boiling water there. Meanwhile, we are going to start the uh, the other portion. So we have some of the sugar, a little dash of salt, and our egg yolks. And we're going to get that. Uh, we're going to whip that together until it is uh, light and a little bit fluffy. And that won't take very long. So we'll do that while we're waiting for the cream to get warm. And there you can see Chef Caleb has that uh, well beaten. Uh, it is it is light colored. It is frothy. Uh, that's just about perfect. So we are going to add to our now warm cream the gelatin uh, after we've drained it. So we're just going to make sure it has no excess water in it uh, and it's bloomed. And then we're just going to add our chocolate to the uh, to the warm cream. And I got a little too close to the. Uh, to the double boiler here and some st steamed up my lens, but uh, that's fine. So we are going to mix together the warm cream, the uh, chocolate, and the gelatin together here. Now it is a, it is pretty important to get the amounts right in here so that the uh, your chocolate mixture does not break, which means you have a layer of oil over top of a layer of uh, chocolate solids and milk solids. You just want to avoid that as much as possible so you do want to keep the uh, proportions pretty even on this one uh, as to what we say in the in the uh, uh, recipe list and you're just going to stir that until it's good and smooth and there's no pieces or chunks of uh, of the um, gelatin remaining so once that's done we're just going to give a last little stir to our uh, eggs and sugar mixture over here. This is the egg yolks, sugar, and salt that we uh, mixed together earlier. Now because we're going to be adding something hot to this, we're going to do it in very small batches. We do want to temper the egg yolks so that they don't scramble. So very, very slowly add the first couple of bits here and mix it immediately. You, it's, uh, you do want to make sure that it doesn't cook the eggs right, right away. Um, you want to give it time to come up to temperature and make sure that everything is going to uh, mix together and not just like cook into uh, chocolate scrambled eggs. So once you've added the first couple and you've got the uh, the eggs up to temperature and everything's nice and smooth in there, you can just add the rest of that melted chocolate and cream mixture. And remember this does contain all of that, uh, that gelatin as well. So this is what's going to control the, um, the consistency of the final product. So 
So there we go. Once you have all of your uh, chocolate mixture in there, you are going to just keep mixing that together until it is good and smooth. So taking your whisk, you're just going to make sure that uh, there's, again, no uh, chunks of anything. There's no um, chunks of melted chocolate or uh, pieces of uh, gelatin or anything in there. Just make sure it's all well mixed together. And then once that's good and smooth, um, you are going to want to set this aside until it is cooled, at least to room temperature. Um, it can go a little bit cooler as well, but you don't want it to be completely cold because otherwise it will set and it will be harder to mix in your cream. So um, Now we're just going to work on the garnish a little bit. We got these, um, uh, I have to admit they're off-brand Oreos, but uh, they're <laughs> just these chocolate cream cookies, whatever you like. Uh, we just wanted the, the, the cookies basically to, uh, to make a, a cookie crumb. Uh, garnish for these. So we're just going to open them up, take the cream out. You can certainly use Oreos if you like, whatever you have on hand. We just like the uh, contrast and texture to have the chocolate cookie uh, broken up. So we're just going to put that in a Ziploc bag and without closing it, we're just going to uh, gently tap that with a <laughs> with a rolling pin, give a little roll until it is broken up. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, it doesn't have to be uh, really, really fine. It can have little chunks of chocolate cookie, that's fine. A, a, a variance in texture is just perfectly fine for that, uh, for that garnish. We just want a little bit of crunch there. So now for the whipping cream, we are going to add uh, sugar and vanilla to another mixing bowl. This one's been in the freezer. Just a little bit of vanilla in there. Vanilla really does help bring out the flavor of chocolate when they're mixed together. And then we're going to add our cream as well. Now ideally your cream should be uh, cold as well. It helps if it has come out of the fridge. Um, we accidentally left ours out after we used it in the other part of the recipe. But that's fine. We had a very, very cold um, bowl to work with. So uh, you see Chef Caleb here is going to whip this to soft peaks. Again, if you have a mechanical blender like a, an electric blender, uh, uh, or beaters I should say, um, you're welcome to use that of course, whatever you prefer. But you don't want to go much past soft peaks. That's about as far as we want to go uh, just for the texture. So once you're there, uh, as long as your uh, Chocolate mixture is good and cool, at least down to room temperature. Uh, still, you can see here it still flows a little bit, so it's a little bit warm. It's not cold, and we're going to gently mix that in with the uh, with the whipping cream. Now, because we used cream in the chocolate as well, it can stand a little bit of beating. Um, normally, you don't want to beat it too much, or else it's going to lose a lot of loft. But because we used whipping cream in the chocolate mixture as well, we can use. Um, a little bit more force than we normally would. Uh, so you don't have to just gently fold it. You can use a little bit of beating. But you don't want to beat it too much because it will knock some of the air out as well. So once you've got a pretty even mixture of cream and chocolate on your first half, we're just going to use uh, the folding method for the remainder here. So we're going to get the last of that chocolate mixture into the cream. And then we're going to give it a little mix and then we're going to just mix it through. You can see we're just folding it in at this point. And you can see it does still have quite a lot of loft. It's got that nice uh, whipped cream texture. There is still that nice uh, gelatin in the chocolate mixture that is going to control your texture as uh, as everything cools. So as long as it's got a little bit of loft remaining here, um, your final product is also going to remain kind of airy and uh, and that you get that nice lofty airy mousse flavor uh, and texture when you're uh, when you're finally finished. So we have these nice little mason jars. These also have been refrigerated. They're just coming out of the fridge, and we're just going to layer. A little bit of the mousse with a little bit of those nice uh, uh, cookie crumbs. And just give it a tap so that everything's kind of level in there. And 
And then if you want to be very careful about it, get a nice teaspoon and you can uh, just really control where those uh, cookie crumbs go. You get a nice even layer in there. And then another layer of the uh, chocolate mousse on top of that. Now this form of chocolate mousse with the gelatin as well as the, uh, the custard and cream uh, does tend to just hold its shape really well. It sets very well when it's cold. So uh, this is great for use in cakes and that sort of thing. But uh, it's also really, really nice on its own. And again, it has a very rich, um, very chocolatey flavor. It's got a lot of intensity of flavor um, and uh, just a beautiful, light, fluffy, airy texture. And then you can garnish this however you like. We're just going to uh, top it with a little dollop of the chocolate mousse. And um, we uh, cut one of these nice little Oreo-esque cookies in half. And uh, that'll sit nicely on top, and it'll stand up on its own once everything's chilled and set. And that's it. That's the whole recipe. It's, uh, it's quite simple. There is a little bit of timing involved, but uh, it's not too complicated. And uh, absolutely delicious uh, final product. A little bit different, as I said, from the, from the fruit mousse that we did a little while ago. But... Uh, yeah, just, uh, just as delicious. So if you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to love your food.